Number one. I am a 21 year old female and I was around 7 or 8 when this story took place. I grew up in the suburbs of a large city in Ohio. My neighborhood was like any stereotypical suburb, really safe, lots of kids, and all the parents knew each other. You get the idea. So, let me explain the layout to my house for clarification in the story. So, when you walk in the front door, there is a living room which my parents used as their office, and then the kitchen is straight ahead. Right off the kitchen to the left is the master bedroom. Near the front door, you went down about 8 steps, and we had a finished basement, which my sister and I used as our playroom slash TV room. Then, we had the traditional second floor, which had two bedrooms, for me and my sister. So, one night, my parents decided to go out with some friends of my dad. So it's me, my sister, Rachel, who was nine, and my dad's friend's son, Ben. I believe he was around 12 or 13. I remember him complaining to his dad saying he was too old for a babysitter. Whatever. My usual babysitter Kristen was watching all of us. She was about 17 at the time and has been watching Rachel and I since we were toddlers. So, the night starts out fine. Kristen ordered us pizza and we were all watching TV in my basement. We had a large sectional L-shaped couch that we were all sitting on. It was against the wall that backed up to two large windows, which faced into the backyard. Since our basement was not a traditional basement, you could clearly see out to the backyard through the windows. So, we were all watching a movie. I remember it was the new Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire as this was around 2002-2003. We had been in the basement for a while. At around 10pm, I hear what sounds like someone walking around upstairs on the second floor. The ceiling in the basement lined up to where our bedrooms were on the second floor. I look at everyone else, and they heard it too. My house is older, but I still know what the sounds of people walking sounds like as opposed to just old house noises. I have a large Labrador retriever, so I figure she's just upstairs walking around and we all ignore it. About two minutes later, I go upstairs to my kitchen to get water, and I notice my dog sleeping on the couch in my parents' office area. She had obviously been there for a while as she was in a deep sleep. At this point, my seven-year-old self is freaking out, wondering who the fuck was walking around upstairs. Also, I want to point out that a month earlier when Kristen babysat me and Rachel, she last watched the original Halloween, so I had been convinced since then that Michael Myers was hiding around every corner of my house waiting to kill me. But on with the story. I told Kristen that the dog is asleep on the first floor, so it couldn't have been her walking around. She looked a little nervous, but she just tells me the house is old and makes weird noises and to just watch TV and not to worry about it. So... About 15 minutes later, we hear it again. We put the TV on mute and listen. The walking continues for about 10 seconds after we mute the TV, then stops. At this point, we're all about to shit ourselves, but being the dumb kids we are, we decide to go upstairs and see what the fuck is going on, because looking for an intruder in your house always ends well, right? Anyway... We take the dog with us. We go into me and Rachel's room and don't see anything. But all of us were freaked out. We had all heard the same thing. So, we decided to go down the stairs to my parents' room. The plan was to lock the door and just keep together until my parents and Ben's parents came back. My parents' room was the only room that we had not thought to check since it was on the first floor. We opened the door and turn on the lights, only to find the window wide open. It was early November in Ohio. There was no way my parents had left the window open intentionally. At this point, I want to cry. After checking out the room and determining no weirdos are hiding under the bed, Kristen closes the window, locks the door, and pushes a chair under the doorknob. 
Kristen decides to call my dad and tell him to come home. Why we didn't call 911, I don't know. I don't think any of us wanted to believe someone would actually break into my house. She picks up the phone and there's no dial tone. This was not unusual as the phone in my parents' room was very old and frequently didn't work. It was one of those old phones you had to dial by twirling your finger in a circle. This was also before every 17-year-old had a cell phone, so we relied on landlines. Ben offers to run down to the basement and grab the other phone. He runs downstairs and is back in literally 15 seconds and he looks like he's about to pee himself. He said when he went to grab the phone. He looked out the window that looks into our backyard and saw a person just standing there about 50 feet away from the window, just looking straight into our house, not moving. Kristen decides we need to call 911. She clicks the green button to call and there's no dial tone. Someone was messing with the phones. Kristen brought up the idea of making a run for her car, but no one wanted to go outside after what Ben saw. At this point, it's past 11pm. My parents had said they would be home between midnight and 1am, so we decided to wait it out and try not to shit ourselves. We turn on the TV in my parents' room really loud to drown out any weird noises and just try to stay calm, knowing the door is locked and we have a large dog with us, along with a baseball bat my dad kept under the bed. My parents ended up getting home earlier than expected as they started to worry when they couldn't get a hold of us by phone to check in. We told my parents what happened and ended up calling the police and filing a report. Since we lived in a safe neighborhood, things like this were not a normal occurrence. When the police went out to investigate the phone issue, the phone line had been cut. They also found four or five cigarette butts on the ground near the windows that looked into our basement where we had been eating and watching TV. We could clearly be seen through the curtains sitting on the couch. No one in my family smokes. Whoever broke in or tried to break in had clearly been watching us for a while and knew no parents were home. We never found out if someone was actually inside our house. The police searched all the rooms, and nothing was missing or looked out of place. But the windows in me and Rachel's room were not locked. It was possible that the man broke in through my parents' bedroom, and then escaped out the second story window. The drop would have been about 10 feet, so not impossible. The police took it seriously, and patrolled my street for the next week. They never found the person who Ben saw, but the incident stayed with me for a long time. I was terrified to stay home by myself until I was almost 16, and I made my parents buy thick curtains for the basement so no one could see into the house. I am now a 21-year-old college junior, and I still get freaked out when I have to stay in my apartment alone. I still wonder to this day what the hell that person was doing and what their intentions were. I'm not a religious person, but I thank God that my parents had the good sense to come home when they did. Who knows what would have happened had they stayed out any longer. Number 2 Normally, I'm not much of an app user. In fact, I had what my friends call a dumb phone. Up until about a year ago. Until I got my new phone, I honestly never felt like I was missing out. As cool as my friends made Twitter, Instagram, and wherever an angry bird was sound, I always knew those things would take me away from the thing I really had to pay my focus on. My studies, and my sanity. So, when I got my first phone last year, it was a pretty big deal to my friends. Once I had it, I quickly realized how cool the interface was, and how truly useful it could be. For two weeks, I went app crazy though that eventually lost its pizzazz, until David and I started dating. By then, I had gotten used to the smartphone world, and he, a tech nerd, was all about it. After a few months, he convinced me I needed to download Snapchat for funny conversations via pics, babe. You can guess where it ended up. I didn't mind, however, since David and I had been going strong for a while, and I trusted him never to use any pictures against me, 
And over time, we began to use the app mostly for enjoyment and humor, for the most part. The first time it happened, I was walking out of the mall from work. I was on my phone, which I will admit I'm now a little bit addicted to. And a Snapchat from David came in. It was blurry, but I could make out some of the ground and maybe a part of a car. Assuming it was a mistake and nothing more, I thought little of it for the rest of the night until dinner. Nice butt snap today, babe. I said with a wink. He looked up from his mac and cheese. What are you talking about? You butt snapped me a pick of the ground or something earlier when I was leaving work at the mail? I couldn't tell what it was, but it looked like a mistake. David looked a bit confused and went back to eating. When I asked him what he was doing, all he said was, Must have been a mistake. Must have been a software issue. And then went back to his food. As a serious techie, he takes any accidents he has with his devices super personal. I let it go and went back to our normal routine. For a few days, all snaps were of the usual stuff. Good looking food, ridiculous selfie faces, and a few not safe for work messages thrown in for all time's sake. A few days later, as I was walking out of work, my phone buzzed. I was crossing the parking lot when I clicked the screen on and saw the notification from David. The snap lasted only three seconds and was blurry, but looked like a very pixelated and zoomed in picture of a person. Maybe with blonde hair. I thought it was strange. So I took a selfie and snapped him back. What was that? I received a reply almost immediately of David's face, only it was kind of distorted and weird. In fact, I could barely tell it was him because of the lighting. I figured it was some kind of weird filter or the fact that he seemed to have a bright light on behind him, but his face was completely shadowed in a silhouette. Almost immediately I received another from him, this time clearly of his face with a confused expression. Taken at that kind of angle, a picture is taken without letting your co-workers know you're taking a selfie. Then, another came in. This one was a bit more zoomed out. It was of a petite blonde girl walking in a parking lot. It took me about 10 seconds to realize that the girl in the picture was me. I had no idea how David did it, but I was honestly impressed. Startled at first, but impressed. I snapped back a kissy face with a heart emoji. David snapped back from work with seemingly confused look on his face. I looked around the parking lot, but it was basically empty. He was nowhere in sight. How are you doing that? I sent back, giving my most ridiculous selfie face imaginable. Doing what? He sent back on yet another low-key work selfie. I got in the car, thinking little of it, and went home to make some lunch. Now, we live in the very close outskirts of a big city. So, our apartment is very packed into a surrounded neighborhood. We drew the short straw when we moved in and didn't get a parking space, so we have to park on the street. Even though it was midday on a Tuesday, there were no spots near my house. I had to park a few blocks away and walk. As I walked, naturally, I played with my phone. Even though it was broad daylight and I lived in a nice neighborhood, eyes on your phone or ground are an easy way to keep from making eye contact with any creepy guys potentially hanging around in the street. I texted a few of my friends about weekend plans, when another Snapchat came in from David. This time, it was of me getting out of my car. I stopped and looked around, figuring he must be hiding somewhere. He's a total nerd like that. After a few moments, the breeze got too cold, and I figured he'd meet me inside eventually. You'll freeze out here, nerd, I said lovingly and walked towards my house. I continued walking down the street and another notification popped up. Two new snaps. I opened the first snap, and it was of my kitchen table with a large pot, jarred sauce, and a box of rigatoni. Pasta for dinner? It said. I replied with a smile and a sure, and kept walking. The second snap played. It was of his weird silhouetted face again. The caption said, I'm not cold. A new Snapchat notification popped up. 
This one of me walking down the street just moments before. The caption was simple. I like you. I replied thinking it was David with a snap of my face and quite generously the low cut shirt beneath it with an I love you too. He sent another back of him in my kitchen with the cat, taunting him with the rigatoni. A moment later, a second snap came in of a black screen with a giant emoji with a huge smile on it. I had to admit, however he was doing these snaps was really quite impressive. I'd have to ask him tonight how he did it. When I got into the house, I saw him cooking and didn't have time to ask him how he played his pranks. The water was overboiling, the sauce was way too hot, and he was looking as lost as ever in front of the stove. He's a shitty cook, but he tries, so I love him for it. I jumped in. I got swept up in making dinner and forgot to ask again about his pranks until he stopped for a moment to run to the bathroom. I heard the door click and my phone chime. A snap of me cooking popped up onto the screen. You're so pretty, it said. I just smiled and put my phone down. When he got out of the bathroom, dinner was ready. Then I told him to grab a plate. We served ourselves and began to talk about our days. So, how do you keep doing those snaps? I said. And how did you get those pictures of me leaving work? What are you talking about? I explained again the pictures he sent, denying the whole thing. He's always had that nerdy awkward sense of humour and it wouldn't be the first time I had ruined a joke or surprise too early. So I just smiled and changed the conversation. He even played up the awkward reserve parts the entire time too, as if my questioning had truly confused him. This was the most intricate prank he had ever played to date. Throughout the night, I got a few more from his account when I wasn't paying attention. He must have sneakily gotten the pictures when he crossed the room on occasion. He was busy at his computer working on a program he and his friends were building, and I sitting on the couch reading. I thought little of it and quietly enjoyed the fact that, for the first time in a few months, he was being pretty forward and flirty. I liked being noticed. That was until we went to bed. I figured since he had been sending me all these weird messages to get my attention, he wanted all of my attention. But when the lights went out, he kissed me goodnight rolled over and started snoring. Almost immediately, my phone buzzed. A snapchat popped up of me from earlier, walking from the car. A second was of me in my car and the caption, I'm always watching. The third was of me sitting in my living room, reading. Only I realized the angle was off. It was taken up high, as if from the top corner of the room, the only caption was a heart emoji. The fourth was of me in my car. During a quick moment, I picked my nose. Always, it said. I needed to know how the fuck he did this. It was going beyond cute and funny, and now a little creepy. Most importantly, how did he get that shot of me in the car earlier? I was alone. Did he have a fucking hidden camera installed on my dash? This was going a bit too far for a cute prank. I went to check his phone to see if he had some weird app installed, but it was powered off. I got up to check his computer to see if he had something running on that, but that too was powered off. A little annoyed, I woke him up and started yelling at him. He, as most sleeping people would do, woke up confused and annoyed and then answered with a sleepy, yes dear, we'll take care of it tomorrow and just turned over and went back to bed, immediately regaining his snoring tempo. A new snap came in, and I shoved the phone in his face, but he didn't want to wake up. This one was of me reading a few hours earlier, only it was an ultra close-up. There is no way a hidden camera would have taken it, but the space in front of my couch is completely wide open, and this was taken at an eye level, maybe two feet from my face. I like you, it said. A chill went down my spine. Almost too terrified to answer, I turned the camera on my phone. I put the Snapchat to selfie and turned the flash on. 
The bright flash was the only light in my nearly pitch black room and illuminated my face and the room around me for a split second. Who the fuck is this? I captioned the picture. Nothing. I took another with my flash. Seriously, who is this? A new snap came in of a black screen with a large smile emoji on it. I'm a friend, it said. How the fuck are you doing this? Nothing. I sent one more back, the flash of my phone illuminating my face and my messy bedroom for a split second. Why are you doing this? No answer. I sent back another. Please stop. A message of a black screen with a giant sad face emoji came up. I'm sorry. I sent back another. Please, go away. After a moment, another notification popped up. Another black screen with an unsure face emoji and caption. I'm sorry, Sasha, but I cannot do that. I sent one last reply. A single word. Why? A few moments passed. My phone buzzed with a Snapchat notification. I opened it and my blood ran cold. The snap displayed a picture that took me a second to comprehend. There in the center of the screen was a girl, me, sitting in my bed. My face and the picture just barely illuminated by the flash of my phone from the picture I had just taken a moments before. I could see David sleeping next to me, and our cat laying lazily off in the corner. The picture had been taken from not five feet away. Before I even had a chance to scream, I felt a cold whisper in my ear. Because I really like you. Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader here. I hope you enjoyed listening through that. If you did, please slap a like. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to be notified of future uploads? If you have a story you want me to narrate, please send it to my email in the description box. Once again, thanks a lot for listening.